Who's ready for some strange El Natale astrology? Raise your hand, raise your hand. Okay. When there are two full moons in a calendar month, the second full moon is called a blue moon. And August 30th, 2023, we have a Pisces full super blue moon. That's a lot of superlatives to tell you that astronomically in the sky, the moon will appear bigger and brighter because it's closer to the earth and it's in the sign of Pisces and it's the second full moon in August. We're gonna kind of go all over the place, but it's all gonna come together in the end. I'm gonna tell you a story. Yeah, we're talking about Smurfs. We're gonna go over the Sabian symbols and then we're gonna end up with three things to know to take with you to pack in your little bag to take you in this Pisces journey together and make the most of this full moon in Pisces for you. Blue moons happen only once every two and a half years. So they don't happen very often. That's the idiom, once in a blue moon. So you may or may not know this, but in the 1980s cartoon show, The Smurfs, a blue moon indicated when a new baby, a baby Smurf would be delivered to Smurf Village. So there are only two Smurfs that were not delivered by storks to the village. Number one is Smurfette. She was created by Gargamel, the wizard, the antagonist in the show, in order to tempt all the male Smurfs, there's no female Smurfs for some reason, and tempt them into this, I don't know what to say about that, mm, to seduce them basically, and they will all start fighting each other, and that will bring their demise, because that's what Gargamel wanted. Didn't work out for him. She decided she wanted to be a Smurf. Papa Smurf did some magic. She became blonde. Anyway. Uh, 80s stuff. The other one is Papa Smurf's one begotten son. Yes, Papa Smurf did have one actual bio child and his name was Empath, Empathy Smurf. So I'm gonna share his story with you now as an allegory to explain this Pisces full moon because it's a Pisces. Let's be imaginative, let's be whimsical. And Pisces has a huge connection to empathy. So let's do it. Empath Smurf was born with a star on his forehead and that indicated he had some very empathetic, extreme empathetic behaviors. And Papa Smurf was really worried about his son. He was too emotional, too many feelings. And he thought the other Smurfs would just ostracize him and treat him terribly and that it would really hurt Empathy Smurf. So he sent Empathy Smurf to this village called Cycelia. And he was trained how to function in this society where he was supposed to manage his sensory overstimulation. So Empath Smurf spent his time growing up with these Cycelians and they were emotionless, had really bad social interactions, but he was raised to believe he was one of them. And even though he was different in appearance, he was blue, he just thought, but it wasn't until his 70th birthday where he was allowed to visit Smurf Village and he started to see the Smurfs and every 10 years he was allowed to go back, but he didn't know who he really was yet. On his 150th birthday, Empath Smurf had a couple of really crazy things happen to him. One, he was told that he was actually the son of Papa Smurf. Yeah, he had the Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader moment. <laughs> I am your father. Two, he was about to be released from Cycelia, but just before he was released from Cycelia, there was an order to do this like Hunger Games thing for some reason or another, where all the Cycelians had to fight each other one-on-one -on -one until the death. Now, by this time, Empathy Smurf was not, not only empathetic, but he was also stuffing all of his feelings. Like he was trying not to be empathetic, but he knew that if he was going to go back and live with the Smurfs, he had to go through each year the ritual of redemption. The ritual of redemption was when the Smurfs all together, all the Smurfs go into this pool of infinity or whatever it's called, and they go in and have their soul checked because <laughs> they're supposed to be innocent. They're supposed to be pure. That's part of their magic. And he knew that if he killed somebody one-on-one -on -one, that he would not be able to go live with the Smurfs. If he went into the pool of destiny or whatever it's called, he would be he would be judged that you know he was he didn't have a clear conscience, didn't have a clean soul, and he would have to die, give up his life. And Pat Smurf has no choice. He has to fight. So he's fighting his opponent. The opponent, he's letting him win because he knows he's not gonna kill the guy. He cannot. And during this time, he's empathetic, right? So he gets this message from Papa Smurf and Papa Smurf says, empathy Smurf, you're gonna have to do your best to survive. You know, try not to kill this guy, but also you have to live. So he brought up his strength and he was able to win the fight. But unfortunately he did everything he could, but the other guy still ended up dying. Empathy Smurf goes back to Smurf Village and they go to the ritual 
the Redemption Day ritual. The empath swims across the pool of souls, the infinity pool, whatever it is. And when he's in there, he's ready to give up his life. He's ready to go ahead and, and die. But the spirits in the pool, they saw empath's heart and they realized empath didn't kill out of malice and he did everything he could to prevent the opponent's death, but he couldn't. So empath was given this second chance at life. He was able to be reborn. So he went into the water, he came back out, reborn, given a second chance. So from that time on, he promised and resolved that he would never take another being's life again. So he was able to come back into his empathetic state. He had to figure out how to be in the world and have his emotions be appropriate. It's part of Pisces. Pisces is this incredible opportunity to transcend ego. And these feelings, if we have them all the time, this empathy, if it's in an extreme case, extreme way, it's hard to live in this earth realm. It's a very dense earth realm. So the spirit and the body, this is part of this Pisces story, right? The two fish that are swimming in different directions, but they're attached to each other. One foot's in the future, or one fish is in the future, and one is in the past, but we're living in the here and now, to be here now. So this is a reconciliation, reconciling the past and the present. Pisces is this liminal space. It represents before life and after death. So empath Smurf is in that space where he has to really look at himself deeply and understand what his feelings are, how he can live in this world being an empathetic person, not to be smashed down to the ground or be killed by someone else either. Still talking in metaphor, okay, <laughs> uh, allegory. So this is a limitless potentiality of Pisces, but what we also have here is Saturn. Saturn in Pisces, which is saying, we need some skin, we need some boundaries, we need to have rules. We can't just all go around being very emotionally open all the time. There has to be reality, <laughs> reality of how things are in the world. Mm. Pisces is embryonic and Pisces is ancient, but Pisces experiences are also happening here and now. I'm a philosopher that I can't do anything about what happened yesterday or what's gonna happen tomorrow. But I feel like I'm full control of what's going on now. That brings me to this book that I'm reading and listening to. I have both versions, book and audio, and it's Will Wheaton's annotated biography. Will Wheaton is an actor. He was in Star Trek and he's, you know who he is. But it's called Still Just a Geek. He was actually looked it up because I've I'm reading the book and I just looked it up just now and he happens to be a Pisces moon, which is square to Gemini in his chart. So he's a perfect example to talk about here. It's interesting in his book because he takes his blog and it's many layers of time that he's doing. He takes his blog, which was written in like 2000 to 2004, to some, somewhere like that. And he's writing his book in 2004. So he's annotating that in 2004. And then in 2022, he's going back and looking at both of those things and bringing in a new perspective of his thoughts on his words, on his life and what he said and did. Throughout his life, he's seeing things completely differently. And he's learning through this square from Saturn on his big open-hearted Pisces moon that there needs to be boundaries. You need to understand over time your emotional state. He's very apologetic about things that were socially acceptable. Everybody said the word lame or, you know, there was just some things that everybody said and did, but he's very apologetic in his annotations. And, and, and that's okay. He's making amends for things that he feels like he needs to because he's got this Pisces moon with the Saturn where he's going back over time and seeing what he said was inappropriate or not inclusive of everybody, or he was being too hard on himself. He was trying to, okay, that's another thing Pisces does, takes that whole feeling of the whole world, all of these emotions, everybody's needs, you know, taking them on. I'll take it for you. I'll take your emotion. I'll, I'll stand back and let you, you know, give me all of that and I'll take it and I'll hold it and I'll take the blame. That's a Pisces thing, right? That can happen. 
but he learns over time that it's not all his fault and everything comes and goes everything comes and goes but looking back over time and our feelings and our emotions it's something that you can do too you're a completely different person than you were 20 years ago guarantee we're on a trajectory we're on this growth path and this is part of it looking at it speaking of everything going back and forth <laughs> the next thing we're going to talk about here are retrograde planets so under this Pisces blue moon, we have Mercury, Venus, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto, all in retrograde, six planets. And on September 3rd, right about you know a few days after this full moon, Venus is gonna go direct, but on September 4th, Jupiter turns retrograde. So it's a bit of a rarity to have all these planets in retrograde. What this means is that there's some deep reflection and it's at, at its max right now <laughs> with all these retrograde planets. It's kind of like Will Wheaton's book. Lots of reflection, lots of looking back and rethinking things. So it's better than plowing ahead without much thought right now. That's part of what, what's going on. You could be feeling out of sync with your life, your people in your life, people around you, the world, politics, anything. You just might be feeling like you're coming to this continuous wall that you're hitting your head on. Or even the path that you've chosen in your life. Is it, is it really the right one? I thought it was. Is it? It might be. But this is the time to take some sanctuary in yourself. Sanctuary. And whatever that looks like to you. So that could be time in nature. It could be journaling. It could be making art or music. Being in or around the water. Whatever that looks like for you. Someplace quiet. Someplace personal. Where stillness is available to you. Stillness in your own personal way can be found. It doesn't mean you're just sitting still. Like some people find stillness or transcendence in music, right? You're doing it, but you're not doing it. It's coming through you. And we can connect to that intuitive wisdom that's inside of us. That's what this is offering. It's connecting us to something Piscean, which is far greater. It's the, the greatest empathy that there is. The only one that really matters is this massive empathy, which is the greatest spirit, right? Big. It's bigger than anything we can really comprehend. Ooh, <laughs> this is Pisces stuff. It's like, that's why the Pisces part of us can't just be open and bleeding open all the time with all these emotions because when you open yourself to feeling, like really feeling, really feeling it, feeling someone else's pain or someone else's love or happiness, uh, We wouldn't get a lot of other things done. <laughs> I wouldn't get a lot of other things done. We need Saturn to come in and, and, uh, and help a little bit to, to put some meaning into this. Excuse me. That came out of nowhere. Good Lord. Pisces full moon. Fair warning. It might happen to you too. <laughs> Okay, next level. Next level is the Sabian symbols. Anytime there's a full moon, the sun is providing the light. The sun is providing the light. And that's this dualism of an opposition, which is the only opposition that isn't really fighting. This is a moment when the Ouroboros, the clarity of this dualism is melted into the reality of the truth of it if that even makes sense. So it's not an opposition where it's pulling on each other. It's like, hey, we are one thing on other sides of the spectrum, but we're one. It's Pisces number eight, a girl blowing a bugle. So we've had that one recently. And when a full moon hits on something that we've recently had, it's a highlight, like a, like a, a highlighter. It's an exclamation mark saying, watch this. What is this trying to tell you? And a girl with a bugle, it's a call to participation in the service of the race and evolutionary crisis approaches. Okay, feeling that? Are you feeling that? I'm feeling that. I do. And how do we solve it? Okay, we need to have this emotional resolve and emotional resiliency to have these emotions. Like I said, it's okay to feel them, but to not be attached to them as who we are. To be liberated, feeling and liberation as one. So there's a call being sounded by this moon. It's like, yeah, hey, do you hear it? And it's just a sign of change. It's coming. And the person blowing the bugle, so to speak, is you know not always the one that people want to listen to. The herald, the person that's saying, hey, watch out, this is gonna happen. Something's coming. Um, you know, it's a rebellious thing and people don't want the status quo to be shaken up. So Burgess said that times are changing fast and those of us who can see this are able to announce it to those who cannot. 
So if you're feeling it, you're feeling this change, you're feeling it in your deep emotional space, very empathetically, empathically, open to the universe. Let's take that and uh, try to make the most of it, you know, with sharing in a way that's uh, open and, and um, uh, able to listen to other people's perspectives without trampling them. You know, that there's different sides to the story, but not to be trampled yourself, not to be like empathy smurf and be like, okay, I'm not allowed to do anything. I'm just gonna sit here and take it. No, you don't. You don't have to just sit there and take it. You can blow your bugle in a way that doesn't make people want to plug their ears to the sound of the bugle. And you do this by living your best life. You know who you are, what you need to do, how you need to live in order to make your life the best for you. And knowing your astrology really helps. Knowing what's coming really helps. And then, and it's like that analogy of the in an airline when they say the, bring down the oxygen mask and get it on yourself first so you can help other people. That's what I'm talking about. The sun is coming in from Virgo 8. That's the illumination the sun's providing. It's a Virgo illumination. So it's one of analysis, discrimination. It's a motivation of being of service. This is the Virgo story that we're coming into. It's radiating this intelligence because we also have Mercury there, exalted Mercury, in domicile Mercury, Mercury at full force, but it's retrograde. So it's alongside the sun and it's some clear creative directive telling you look close. Look closely at these details. Think back about what you need to think about. And it makes up this bigger picture. When Mercury goes direct, you're gonna be able to see so much that you're looking at now, and you're looking really deeply, and it's gonna make a whole lot more sense when it's pulled back out and going direct. Virgo 8 is a five-year-old child takes a first dancing lesson. That's Red Yar. Burgess's version of it is a first dancing instruction. Dance. Let's think about dance. Being a young person, five years old, or even, even a grown person, anyway, either one of these two works. Taking your dance lesson for the first time or you've never danced before. Dance is an expression that's controlled. There's an ex expression of emotion in dance. Dance can be very emotional, but it's prepared. It's very Saturnian as well. So you follow these steps and you have this structure or these boundaries in order to express these emotions. It holds it in. A song is like this too. It holds space for that emotion. It holds space for that expression, but there are rules. Hmm? Now, also thinking about taking a lesson, what do you need when you have a lesson? You have to have a teacher. You have to have somebody that knows more than you do to tell you how to get to the place you wanna go. That's how these new perspectives are open and it's open through this Virgo space. Part of being a student is understanding that you don't know everything yet and finding a master that knows something more than you do is gonna lead you to a place where you can get to your own mastery, which is so beautiful. A really good teacher wants you to be better than them eventually. I've been a teacher my whole adult life, and the best, best thing that ever happens is when one of my students outshines me, is better than me. That means I gave them the stepping stool, whatever it was that they needed to get to the point where they've transcended whatever I knew. That's beautiful. Okay. I'm so emotional in this video, I swear to God. Here's what Bridges says. He always encapsulates it so well. Dance is a way to develop and express feelings in a controlled way. It's a community setting, so not unbridled, yet it is emotionally expressive, so not in a denial of the life force. This is emblematic of the journey we must take if we are to find freedom and realization, and typically this requires that we find a teacher, one that can show us what higher states are available to an initiate. Beautiful. That brings us to talking about Saturn. Saturn's going to be visible alongside the full moon. So when you go out and look at the full moon on August 30th, if you notice a bright spot next to the moon, around the moon, depending on where you are on the earth, that's Saturn. And what it means in astrology, amongst other things, is Saturn represents mastery. Mastery. And how does one become a master at anything? <laughs> Determination, time, trial and error, failure, not giving up despite failures, diligent persistence despite setbacks. Becoming a master just takes time, lots of time. And, and Saturn is also the master of time. 
Kronos. It's in his wheelhouse, the representative of time, Lord Kronos. And Saturn things take a long time. This is usually very challenging to say the least. Saturn in Pisces is part of the story. It's about putting a skin on something that can be protected and brought back out and made useful. I'm popping in really quickly here to say thank you so much to the people who have supported this video by purchasing The Runaway Stars. This is my book. It's a poetry book. It's available on Amazon.com if you're interested. It's still available on the Prime until the end of the month, I believe, or maybe until October, and it's free. So if you have Prime reading, you can read it there. It's a good thing to do for a full moon Pisces activity. Maybe you can find some stillness or read someone else's poetry. So poetry's cool, man. Bring it back. Bring poetry back. All right, back to the video. Thanks again. Okay, are you still here with me? So we've gotten through empathy smurf, we've gotten through the Sabian symbols analysis. Now I'm gonna tell you three things to keep in mind. Three little gems to take with you. Number one, there's lots of retrograde action right now, lots. So it's time to double check the details before you move forward with any special big thing that you're doing. It's time to spend some time on your own. Do something on your own. Figure out where your stillness is. Go somewhere without distractions. Get to a still place. Leave the phone, leave the internet, leave the distractions. Listen to the ideas that are coming through or the feelings or just notice what's around you. Thoughts, messages, feelings, anything that's coming through in that space. All right, number two, number two. Think deeply during this full moon about what you might want to change in your life. How can you become a beginner again? It's something. Learn how to metaphorically dance in whatever way you feel called to, right? Just a metaphor, dance. It means don't give up on your thing that you're doing when it gets hard. Beginning is hard. Being a beginner is hard. But a teacher helps. Good teachers help. And mastery is the reward of Saturn. And when Saturn is in Pisces, there's a chance for a, a start to transcend personal limitations. <laughs> to be able to package the great spirit within Saturn and unite yourself with something greater than your singular self. Number three, this is something that I'm doing right now, is taking advantage of the theta brain state during hypnopompia. Hypnopompia is when you're in a hypnopompic state this is the state of consciousness that's leading out of sleep. So there's another word that I don't remember, but that's when you're going to sleep, it's different. So when you're coming out of sleep, when you're waking up, this is the theta brain pattern wave activity and it's resembling when you're relaxed. So very relaxed yet awake. So you have this space of time when you're just waking up where things are different in your brain. You're very, very wide open psychically to be getting information from your dreams or just from voices or from ideas or visions, anything like that. Because the brain is at a low fre lower frequency, the theta waves are at a very low frequency, seven to 10 hertz. So it's, it's a very special moment. So when you are waking up, instead of it being a fleeting time where you, know, you just go on your phone or start scrolling or whatever, that's what a lot of people do, you can train yourself to stay aware of whatever it is that's coming through. So if you have a pen and paper by your bed, that's the best. Just write down whatever is coming through your mind. Do not judge it, just whatever it is, the words that are coming out, whatever is the idea, no matter how strange it is, whatever you have in your mind right when you wake up. So this morning, for example, this is what came through for me. I'm gonna share it with you. Be very vulnerable here with you and share what came through my theta brain frequency this morning, verbatim. I didn't change anything. I just wrote down what was there. Okay. This is what it said to me this morning. Inspiration is contagious. One can inspire another person to action through the pursuit of their own passion. And in the act of sharing their passion, inspiration flows between the individual. This leads to the best parts of life, innovation, joy, emotional connections, and an interconnectedness that makes us more than just a biological primates. This is where the consciousness of the living universe freely expresses itself, where it contemplates and observes itself in infinite ways. We are the conduits. So. <sighs> Pisces stuff, man. It's heavy duty. 
big feelings. And it's okay. It's okay. It's all good. It's all part of it. It's all part of it. <sighs> Healing, compassion, and empathy are not simple roads to travel. Okay? They need boundaries. You need shoes on that road, you know? But they can also lead us when they're properly packaged, when they're properly used, processed, understood, and, and disassociated from in a way, that we can transcend those things. We can transcend our human burdens that weigh us down. And, and we can take some burden off someone else in a way that it doesn't take from us. I think that's what I keep trying to express is knowing what you have to do in your life, how you are, what you are, understanding your still space, getting that oxygen mask on is so incredibly important because it helps you become aware of your deepest truth. And in that way, we see that we're not singular at all. We're all part of this big, big story, this big thing, not just a bunch of scattered, separated pieces. That's a big fat lie. Huh. And that's why, that's why it's important to understand. <sighs> mm. with that being said, thanks for sticking with me with this. Uh, it was emotional. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Wow. There's nothing more I can think of to say to you. Just pull out some Avita. All I can say to you now is I like you just the way you are. I, I hope all this makes sense. And um, I wish you a beautiful full moon in Pisces. I'll talk to you next time.